What's up everyone, I'm Mike Mahardy. We are here at Gamescom 2016 in Cologne, Germany. I'm here with Tamor Hussein who just played what sounds like a crazy game. Yeah, it's Vampire, yeah. which made by Don't Know Entertainment, who you may know as the guys behind Life is Strange. But it's not got that much in common with that. That's what people mo probably know them most for. It's closer to Remember Me, the game they did before that, which is published by Capcom. Um, there's still some elements of Life is Strange, stuff like the focus on characters and narrative and dialogue decisions, but it definitely feels like more of an action-driven game, which is, I th it seems like they're trying to take in some learnings about storytelling from Life is Strange and build that into this new game. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting experience from what I can tell so far. I'm not quite sold on it, but they've got some hooks in there that I quite like. So Life is Strange had a super weird narrative. Is that kind of the case here with Vampire? It's, uh, it feels like the setting kind of makes it kind of initially seem quite simple. It's a, you know, you play this character called Dr. Jonathan Reed. He's been to war, he's a doctor, he's figured out stuff about blood transplants and that kind of stuff. And he returns to London where there's a Spanish flu epidemic and uh, also vampires. They go Naturally. hand in hand. Yeah. And uh, just conveniently, he's, you know, he's expert on blood, he gets bitten by a vampire. And it's like, oh man, I got to take him. Yeah, so exactly. That is peak irony for vampires. Um, but yeah, so it's all about kind of, um, I'm not sure what the actual main quest is, but it just seems like he's just dealing with the aftermath of being a vampire. And there's like elements of the city, which is core to how you play the game. So like it has a population and different districts. It takes place in London. So you go to places like Whitechapel and that kind of stuff. And the key of what I saw was how your actions within the city influence your surroundings. So you are a human and also a vampire. There was a hint that there you may be some sort of daywalker, but they don't confirm that at all. It was kind of like, maybe, maybe not. Um, but like you have, you need to feed, um, but you're also trying to be a good guy. I know I should feel something. So why don't I? What does it mean? That I'm dead too? What's troubling you so much, Jonathan? Lady Ashbury, what are you doing here? So the main focus seems to be on balancing being a good person and a vampire, and the kind of vampiric side of you is always trying to pull you into being a bad person. You have to feed on the denizens of the city, but how you kind of do that is up to you. It never tells you who you can and can't kill. Everyone in the city is open to be, you know, feed, fed on by you. Um, but they give you enough information on each person for you to figure out whether this person's a good person or a bad person. But that doesn't necessarily like make it easier because they have uh, relationships. They're quite localized. It's not like you're feeding into a greater story. It's like, for example, during our demo, we had this guy who seemed like a bit of a no good Nick and we just want to kind of like speak to him about his son. But like I said, he's got a son and the son is ill. He's a bad person and he acts like a bit of a terrible like drunky type. But like you need to think about, do you want to eat him straight away, or do you want to kind of like be nice to him so you can get the information out of the so you, about the kid so you can speak to the kid? And they have like tropes like, for example, you need to be invited in before you can do something. So you have the dialogue system where you got to try and keep it sweet with him for as long as possible until you get the information, and then you can use like a vampiric power like mesmerize to get him to go into the shadows where you can feed on him and that kind of stuff. So the thing that's really interesting about this game for me is how they build how they leverage what they achieved and learned from Life is Strange into a game that's closer to, you know, the game before Life is Strange, Remember Me, which kind of wasn't critically acclaimed or sold really well. It's going to be interesting to see how they figure that stuff out and whether it is going to be like, you can see that, oh, Life is Strange has improved their storytelling. It seems like they've got a cool idea, but whether it turns out to be, you know, something exceptional that kind of is ta taken in by the pop culture in gaming and that kind of stuff, it's just a matter of time, I reckon. Cool. Yeah. So does this have a release date? And if so, when is it released? I don't believe it does, okay. um, but um, I may be lying. <laughs> cool. Just check gamespot.com. Cool. We've got all the hot release dates all right. uh, all there, but like we'll have an interview with, the, with one of the guys from the development team hopefully soon. Um, but yeah, check cool. it out. Well, that's Vampire. For more coming out of Gamescom 2016, stay tuned to GameSpot. We'll have news, impressions, and previews throughout the week.